Hello everybody. Our next camera is the Fuji Discovery 400 Tele. It was introduced in 1990. It was superseded uh, in 1991, but these were probably in the supply chain for a couple of years. It was also known as the DL400 Tele Super, and it was a DL400 Tele, which is a completely different camera body. It uses drop-in film loading and pre-wind where it puts the entire roll onto the take-up spool and that way as it's shooting it's pulling it back into the canister. The idea being that uh, if you accidentally open the back or something like that the shots you were, had already taken were safe inside the canister. This guy acts like a zoom when you press the uh, button here on the top, but it's not really a zoom. It's a, uh, a dual lens camera, kind of like uh, Minolta did. A lot of the late 80s, early 90s, before they had really figured out the micro motors and things that were required to do true zooms. So this guy has a uh, a wide angle lens, 35 millimeter f3.5, three elements in three groups, and then it has a built in teleconverter, a 2.3x, uh, that's another four elements in three groups, so that when you go out to 80 millimeters, it's f6.7, add it all up, and you have seven elements in six groups. I believe this applies to both focal lengths, but it stops down to f32. Has active autofocus. It's good down to uh, 0.8 meters wide. Info on this exact model was really, really hard to find. Butkus had a similar, but not quite this model. I finally found a great article on this whole kind of era of, you know, fixed lens point and shoots transitioning to zooms on a uh, site called 678 Vintage Cameras. I'll put a link down in the description. The blog on this site is wonderful. Uh, this has active autofocus, 0.8 meters when it's set to wide and 0.5 meters uh, at telephoto. It uses 20 steps or 20 autofocus zones. So when it's trying to focus, you know, it'll do 20 steps between its nearest focus and infinity. Uh, it has an autofocus lamp here on the back. It'll blink. One manual said it beeps, but I've never heard this uh, camera beep so I don't think that applies to this model but it does blink if you're too close there is a landscape button on the back which just tells it focus at infinity and don't try and do anything else that's great if you're doing a landscape or if you're shooting through glass or something that's going to really badly confuse uh, infrared triangulation viewfinder is not bad uh, it's 0.4 uh, X magnification at wide, 0.72 at, at uh, tele. It has parallax marks, they don't move or anything. And then in the middle it has a dot and then sort of parentheses looking around it to let you know where your autofocus point is. It reads DX encoded film from 50 to 1600. I don't know what it says it to if you have a non-DX encoded canister or one that's outside that range. Uh, the flash is pretty good on this guy and it cycles through nothing which is auto and the lightning bolt which is always fire and then the slash through it which disables it. Um, at ISO 100 at 35 millimeters it's good from 0.8 to 4 meters, and at 80 millimeters, it's good from, for uh, 0.5 to 3 meters. Uh, it has an LCD on top, which gives you a few things. I'm not sure what this does, but the self-timer cycles between 1, 2, and 3. 
I don't think that's seconds. Maybe that's how many shots to take after it counts down. Because what I read was this is a 10 second self timer. The LCD has the film counter, uh, whether you're using the self timer and the flash status. Um, it also, this camera also has a mid roll rewind. So it would rewind shots you haven't taken yet. I guess that'd be useful if your batteries were about to die or something like that. It has an electronically controlled shutter. It goes from an eighth of a second to a three hundredth of a second. A couple of sites said two hundred fiftieth of a second, but I'm pretty sure it is a three hundredth. Wouldn't swear to it though. Uh, it uses a six volt lithium battery, a CRP2P or the DL223A or equivalent, you know, it depends on what uh, battery manufacturer you're using. But it's the little stubby uh, six volt. So in a pinch, if you can find some 123s, also known as 123As, just put one up, one down, and a piece of aluminum foil and cram it into the chamber and this will get you through because these are not common batteries and they're stupidly expensive. I had a lot of fun shooting with this camera. It's never fair to cameras because it always depends on the, the individual copy's condition, what kind of film I've got, whether I process it, whether my chemicals are wearing out. But I uh, shot this crazy old hippie bus, beautiful colors. Took it uh, on a hike up to the Latir Lakes here in northern New Mexico. So I got some beautiful images with this camera. It is what it is. It's a 1990 point and shoot, but I may look out for some more of them um, in that blog article that I mentioned. Um, some of them, if you don't flip the teleconverter into the equation, some of them have nice f2.8 wide angle lenses. This one's at 3.5, but it's not a bad lens. I got some decent shots with this guy. So um, I'll be on to the next camera, and I'll see you then.